So let's get to the game right now, uh, both games. And we'll start on the NFC side of things, Greg, where the Packers head to San Francisco to face the Niners. And isn't it nice to have Aaron Rodgers back on this stage, his fourth championship game as a player? It's amazing. I mean, it makes this game so much more exciting because to me, like the story of Aaron Rodgers in his career is always searching for that balance. Maybe even in life, if you want to get it a little deep, but especially on the field, the balance between creating on his own and improvising and doing what the structure of the play tells you to do. And I think he's gotten out of whack lately, the, in the last few years where he's trying to do too much on his own. In life or on the field? Uh, maybe a little bit of both, but I feel it's like he's that. in a good place on both. <laughs> right now where he's making it happen on the field when he needs to, and he's doing what Matt LaFleur says when he needs to. Well, the big problem is he's going up against a defense that limit him to the lowest yards per attempt of his entire career in week 12. And I understand why Kyle Shanahan wants to downplay that blowout victory, but the losing team in a regular season blowout has lost 13 straight rematches in the playoffs. That's mm. an issue. More importantly, that defense showed up last week with a vengeance against the, against the Vikings, and they suffocated this defense or this offense, they stole Dalvin Cook's lunch money. Mm. They swarmed Kirk Cousins. They didn't let anything happen beyond the sticks. Everything was played in front of that box within 10 yards. And this defense is a problem for the Packers. Yeah, I'm with you, Wes. I feel like a lot of this, uh, what I'm hearing this week, is sort of wishing that Aaron Rodgers would morph into the Rodgers that we've seen in the past. Made some great game throws. Last week. He was Made there. some great throws, but I still, it's just as easy for me to see him touring Saigon 10 days from now on a food tasting show because he's not in the Super Bowl. I mean, it's not all this goes to script just because it's Aaron Rodgers. Well, I guess there is an element as fans of one of the greats of all time, Aaron Rodgers, wanting to see him do it again. And I'll be rooting for Rodgers for that reason. But also, let's not forget the 49ers quarterback here as well. Jimmy Garoppolo is a guy, if I'm the Niners, if I'm the Packers or I'm a fan of the Packers, I am scared because... The Niners are one hot streak from the quarterback away from being unbeatable in this mm. tournament. And I think Garoppolo has shown it in spurts this season that he could be, he can go pass for pass with any quarterback in the league when he gets hot and he's feeling right. He wasn't quite that guy last week, but he didn't have to be. He threw an early pick and then they just started running the ball like crazy. But don't think that that means he doesn't have it in him in this game. That's what I'm concerned about because we know their defense is great, San Francisco. We know they run the ball. But if Garoppolo's slinging it around, forget about it. I, I hear you, but I think there's this conception that the Packers aren't talented. And the Packers are incredibly talented. If I was thinking of a way to beat the 49ers, you want an offensive line that's great on the edges. They have two great tackles, tons of continuity. You want a defense that can get after Jimmy Garoppolo and make him make some mistakes, which last week he had one pick. It could have been two, and they got very conservative. They have a pass rush in Zedaria Smith and Preston Smith and Kenny Clark. Like They have a lot of talent on this team. They're they not deserve, an underdog. They deserve to be here, no question about it. But I, I feel like Kyle Shanahan is just a couple seasons away from being viewed as maybe the third, second best coach in the NFL. And I feel like he's on a ex-coworker path of destruction right now. It was Kirk <laughs> Cousins a week ago. This week, it's Matt the Flower, Matt LaFleur. It's Ooh. Mike Pettin. If you tell me which of these guys Yikes. is going to spend a year or two with person X and know and get the better out of it, it's Kyle Shanahan. And we saw that last week with Cousins. And I certainly trust him to have an inner knowledge of what's happening with Green Bay's coaching staff and maximize it. He's, He's like, I am the, I was your boss, Matt LaFleur. You were not my boss. He's such a great play caller that being quarterback for Kyle Shanahan has replaced quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys as the most coveted job in the NFL, I think. I mean, I, I think what we're really not talking about is Mark just wants the Packers to lose. I mean, we know this. On the, this is, on no, the this podcast, a, you literally had a, a segment once, why I hate the Packers. That is an age-old <laughs> segment from another year. I, I am getting killed by Green Bay fans. I think they deserve to be here. This is a challenge that I don't think people are. People are almost like looking past San Francisco a little bit. This is how the Packers beat the Niners. Right before the game, a couple hours before, you sneak into the locker room of the Niners. You bend all the bills of Kyle Shanahan's Ooh, like yeah. blessed <laughs> flat brim caps. And there's no way he no, has he's done. the mind power to Towerless. overcome that. All right, Titans against the Chiefs. This is a great one. Wes, Derrick Henry has been kind of like the biggest star, individual star in the playoffs. Uh, and now he has a huge challenge getting one more win in the AFC to get to the big game. Yeah, let's get real with research here. Our prolific research department gives us a voluminous packet of stats every week, but without context, what are we doing with these stats? Are you complimenting or, or, or hating on them here? I can't. <laughs> they, give us, they give us the information we need. It's up to us to put them in context. Gotcha. And every stat with the Chiefs defense starts with since week 11. Mm. Why is that? 
because they played the Titans in Week 10, and, the, and they gave up 225 yards on the ground, season-high rushing yards allowed. Derrick Henry went for 188 and two touchdowns against this defense with a healthy Chris Jones mm. in Week 10, and this Titans team is built. For three years, they've been building a power team to take advantage of teams like the Chiefs, who go small at linebacker, who are built in their secondary. They're built to stop the pass, not the run. The Titans are built to shove a team like the Chiefs around, and I think we might see that again. And when you look at their offense as well, uh, beyond Henry, Ryan Tannehill is a guy that's so interesting to me in this game because you look at his box score the last two weeks. He's got 29 passes total in two weeks, and yet they have two comfortable wins. And when he has had to make a throw, especially last week um, against the Ravens, he has delivered. My feeling, uh, though, knowing what we saw with the Chiefs last week, seven straight touchdowns and all that, we need to get a big performance from Tannehill, a big statistical performance, because against the Patriots, it felt like the perfect opponent for the Titans. Against the Raven, Ravens, it was the perfect game script, and they were able to play off that. In this game, I don't think it's going to be as hospitable. You, you might be right because of the immense weight the Chiefs you know, put on you with their own attack, but I, I, Mike Rabel, to me, feels like a dude on a roll. And same with Arthur Smith, the way that he's flipped the switch on the Titans' big play offense, which never existed with Marcus Mariota. I just trust this team. First it was, hey, you can't beat Bill Belichick. Who could? Bang, he's out. Oh, you can't beat Coach of the Year prospect John Harbaugh. Bang, he's out. Now mm. it's Randy Reed. I'm not so sure. It's I'm just going to crown the Chiefs. You want to try to stop Derrick Henry if he's hot in the third quarter? Good luck, Joan of Arc. I, I get it, but you, you need a passing game at some point in this playoffs. I think Vrabel knows his defense is not going to stop the Chiefs like they stopped the Ravens and the Patriots. He's going to have to score points, and that's because Patrick Mahomes... He has plays that you just can't stop. I mean, you get Patrick Mahomes into a situation like a third and 18. I'm thinking of a play a couple weeks ago uh, where you have a stop route to Tyree Kill. You, you pick up a third and 18. It's that easy. Then you go last week. This is two Chiefs players, him and Kelsey, against six defenders. Sometimes you put up the perfect defense for Patrick Mahomes. This is absurd. And he beats it. It's absolutely absurd. Yeah. And then you also happen to have the greatest play caller, I think, of the last two decades in Andy Reid, who makes it easy for him, too. Yeah, I think Tannehill has been – he's been a great passer the second half of the season too, but all that talk about Derrick Henry's jump pass, the best jump pass I saw all year was Mahomes to McCole Hartman the first time they played the Titans. I think he's mentally like ahead – Mahomes that is ahead of where he was a year ago too. Like the anticipation that he throws with – it. I know you guys have picked on me for it, but I think he's the greatest quarterback – that we've seen in terms of a skill set, in terms of throwing, moving, everything. There hasn't been a quarterback in the NFL as good as him. I'd just be concerned if you get into this situation where we were, we were saying this stuff, how do you possibly slow down Baltimore a week ago? If it is late third quarter and the Titans are hanging around as they have all January, I don't like where this goes for Kansas City. One I would bit. be very concerned if I'm a Chiefs fan and you're facing a deficit with the greatest closer in the league right now in Derrick Henry. The, the goal for the Titans, of obviously, is to get there. And the one thing uh, that we know is they will not be intimidated, uh, Tennessee. No. They've already went to New England. They went to Baltimore. Arrowhead, it's not going to do anything to spook them. Now, what you people don't realize is that we also get in the AFC a showdown of two of the greatest radio voices with Mitch Holtis and Mike Keith. All right. This is the segment, popular one on our podcast, where we... Kind of lay something out there that the public is not picking up on. And, and, and Greg, I know you love this segment. I do. Yeah, you're a guy that likes to tell people what they don't know. In a war right. segment. Well, I mean, I like to tell people our show is better than their shows. And I <laughs> really want to talk about the Titans defense in this case. What you basic boneheads out there have no clue about is that the Titans Ouch. defense played more snaps a week ago against the Ravens than any team played in a game all season long. You don't think that's going to tire them out? They couldn't get off the field when they played the Chiefs last time. For all the talk that they played well against them offensively, the Chiefs had 30 more plays against the Titans defense. They're not going to be able to get off the field this week either because they're too tired. I'll take 92 snaps over an injured Chris Jones. I mm. think that evens it up a little bit. Wow. All right, that's a good start. Mark, I feel like you're a guy that will have comments to say, and they'll be very strong and condescending. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yes. You know what, you wandering band of chatterbox hobby horses don't quite understand <laughs> about this AFC title game coming up. 
is that the Titans, as mentioned in the last segment, do not need to suddenly change everything that they are. No, they do not. Do not worry about at this point. Keep riding Derrick Henry. And what you do not realize is that Derrick Henry is going to do something very special in this game. It's going to be a play that they rewind on NFL Network 3.0 25 years from now over and over. It's <laughs> this whole prediction. Little animal on big animal. We're going to get Derrick oh, Henry dragging for 10 plus a yards dinosaur? a defensive back on top of him <laughs> for a huge first down. Book it right now. He's done it before. Uh, he carries people left and right. You saw it last week. He's going to do it this week again. They just Iconic change who play. they are, who they were the first time they played. Uh, they're a man team. They played zone because they were afraid. Well, of the they Chiefs. lost. So this time you don't do that. All right, Mark, you listen to this one. What you little boys on white chairs and all you couch potatoes oh, at home don't understand and don't realize is that Patrick Mahomes, the revenge of Patrick Mahomes, it's been staring at you right in the face this whole season and you never understood it. He was the best player in the world last year. The only reason he doesn't have a ring right now is because that Kansas City defense wouldn't let him get on the field in overtime against the Patriots in last year's AFC title game. Well, guess what? The defense is better. The Patriots are dead and buried. Sorry, Greg. And guess are you what? There? Mahomes <laughs> is going lying. to stare you all in the face and laugh and cackle because he is going to show that he is the best in the world and he'll be hoisting mm. Two trophies, one on Sunday, the little trophy nobody cares about, and then the big uh, one. The occasional the I won MVP, so I must cast revenge I mean, the, scenario. the casual disrespect for the Lamar Hunt trophy from a Jets fan, please. <laughs> we never <laughs> had what? one. What? You dolts, dullards, and intellectual bantamweights do Ooh, not ouch. understand. <laughs> that was actually hurtful. Kenny Clark has essentially been Aaron Donald for the last two months of the season. All this talk about the 49ers defensive line, the four or five first round picks they have, the highest pass rush pressure late rate in the league Ooh. was the Green Bay Packers pass rush with Kenny Clark, Zadarius Smith, and Preston Smith. And they're going up against a backup center, Ben Ooh. Garland for the 49ers this week. Kenny Clark's gonna eat. Ooh. I love it. And they're going up against a quarterback who I think in his worst moments this year, when you get him pressured, like you can see the, the brain just spinning a little too fast. I know that Ben Garland, he's not scared. He eats a lot of fish and meat when you go out to dinner with him. That happened when that, I... That your trip, buddy's with Ben Garland. You went on, a trip went on like with a, him. a trip with him. He knows how to keep his body ready. Get ready for this. And by the way, Mark, you yeah. got a new head coach in Cleveland for your Browns, Every Kevin January. Stefanski. You're very happy with the way he looks. Stefanski, you called him a, a Clooney type figure, and then our buddy Andrew Siciliano uh, hit up Stefanski on this after his opening uh, introductory presser. Our our own Kevin, our Mark Sessler, Kevin, I'm sorry, who yeah. is a Browns fan, much like I was as a kid as well, put up on Twitter yesterday a bearded George Clooney say that you mm. bear a resemblance. Has anyone ever called you Clooney? Uh, not until just this moment, Andrew. How do you feel about that? I got enough on my plate right now to worry about uh, trying to get these Browns back to where we want to be. I'm not going to compare myself to any uh, actors, John David or Peter John. I think <laughs> I need to be. I need to get a list of guys and then make sure that we're okay with that. But right. if it's George Clooney, that, that's what you guys say. God bless you. Okay, it was Mark Sessler. I'm going to pin it on him. He one of the resident <laughs> Browns fans in the building. Mark, why are you putting more on his plate? He's trying to save the Browns. I mean, I've been told that my job is essentially just to sit here and look pretty, and so I, I overstepped my powers there. Not I a good think. side when he's looking off camera to the PR Not guy a good in the side middle of the all. interview. The panic look away to the PR guy was a, a nice touch. All right, up next in the news, uh, Tom Brady, a lot of uncertainty about his future. Oh my goodness, he's got a new home, and this about the suite at Gillette Stadium. The Brady suite at Gillette Stadium, where Giselle has been known to watch her husband play football, has been cleaned out. It would appear to be, by those who are in the know, that it has been cleaned out in a way that perhaps it has never been cleaned out before. I mean, I'll repeat it again. That's in new. a way that has never been cleaned out before. Feel, that's new, Greg. Of the Answer to it. from our host, Dan Hansis. He's Answer to afraid it. afraid of Tom Brady being like, the key word there was perhaps. No one knows anything. They clean out the suites. Calm down. In a way that it has never been cleaned Perhaps out before. Perhaps never been Feels cleaned like out before. Feels like a fresh over. break. A what, fresh they like break. took the sprites home? Give, give, give me a break. <laughs> it's gone. Next up in the news, you remember that Chiefs fan uh, from Sunday? 21 nothing in the first quarter. Big Buck Chuck. He says, I'm out of here. He's leaving. And then the Chiefs go on the epic comeback. Uh, check it out. All right, I'm out of here. I'm out of here so we get the second half comeback going. Hopefully. 
can't do it. Got to leave, man. It's the only hope. Guys, got to come back somehow. Got to come back somehow. So I'm out. Y'all enjoy the rest of this game. What would you say to that fan? Uh, watch next game at home. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, your thoughts. The first person I thought of was you. The first time I've seen this. Uh, I think one of the things I've learned, the older I get, the key to maintaining sanity is to avoid terrible, searing regret. Mm. This man's <laughs> ha haunting lifelong regret is punishment enough. <laughs> Wow. He's got to live with that. He's got to live with it. He, he did it with a smile, but he, he's got to live with it. All right, what are we going to be honking about? This mm. is the last thing we're talking about before we say goodbye. On Sunday night, let's make a bold prediction. Mark, you get us going. Bold prediction. I'll tell you how the Titans-Chiefs game ends, and it is with tight end Anthony Ferkser scoring the go-ahead <laughs> game-ending touchdown with about 10 seconds to go. The Titans basically have the Chiefs in a big rumble and a big jumble, and they're going to walk out of there as the Super Bowl team. <laughs> they got them in a rumble <laughs> and a jumble. Away with words there. <laughs> I don't know. We're in lockstep here because I think what I'm going to be Yo, honking. You're predicting Ferkser too? Not Ferkser. Oh, okay. But I'm, I'm predicting that I'll be honking about the fact that the Titans just got done shoving around the oh. Chiefs' defense as if they were Earl Thomas trying to tackle Derrick Henry. Oh, this was, was so wish casting <laughs> from this side of the aisle. Yeah, it's called here. reality, it's Greg. <laughs> Uh, you think that it's just going to be a bully fest again for the Titans? They are built to wow. beat the Chiefs' defense, and I think that's what's going to happen. Mm. Greg, how about you? I, I disagree here. I think what I'm going to be honking about, and I do love to honk when I correctly predict something. Andy Reid's going to be the first coach in a long time to be carried off the field. Maybe the most impressive coach carrying off the field ever. Bill Parcells, that, that was a good one. That was a great one back in Big Super Bowl Andy Reid finally making the Super Bowl with the Chiefs after a lot of playoff losses. You get Mitchell Schwartz, you get some big guys picking him up on his and shoulder. Andy, a man of generous carriage. Right. Yes, it's going to be... going to take a few linemen. It's, it's going to be an excellent view. I'd love to see it, and I think we will see it. You know why? Because as much as we want close games, I think the 49ers and the Chiefs move on easily mm, this weekend okay. because wow. I think they're the two best teams in the league, and that's who we get to see in the Super Bowl. That's my prediction. All right, again, the Around so the NFL fun. podcast. Well, that's just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> Around the NFL podcast, three times a week, Sunday night. We'll recap these games and then head off to Miami. We are so excited. Thank you for watching and enjoy your football. Ferkser. You went Ferkser. with Ferkser. Way back win. The I think you're locked. safe on that. Hawking's the best part. Champions here.